All right, sup guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Trice Too Easy. We're gonna go ahead and get into this NBA slate today. I believe we have nine games. We'll look at the data, the charts, the matchups, the trends, the discrepancies. Hopefully find an edge, hopefully crack these folks. Hope everybody had a good Saturday. My Discord went absolutely crazy. There were so many winners in there. Um, like, I mean, everyone cracked their ass yesterday. It was ridiculous. Um, anyways, guys, if you'd like to join my sports community and discord server, it's in the pinned comment and in the description of the video, 10 bucks a month. I don't sell picks. It's just a community. We have fun. We talk sports. We hang out. We share slips. It's, it's a fun time. We'd love to have you. And if you want exclusive access to viewer perks and tools, I use daily like smart stake, like outlier, along with sports books, I'm partnered with to give my community deposit matches there in the pinned comment and in the description of every video as well. Okay, guys, we'll get right into it. Good NBA slate, a lot of good games. Uh, we'll review a bad beat, big winner. Look at some player props. Then we'll use Smart Stake's sharp money tool to take a look at where the big dogs are putting their money at. Then we'll get into the slate, get serious, dissect it, and crack these folks. Bad beat from yesterday. This was posted in the Discord by Rosa Trades. Uh, I think a new person in there. I've never seen Rosa Trades type or share anything before, but Jackson Smith Najigba to get 60 reception yards was all she needed to cash this parlay, and he didn't have anything. It is so brutal. He 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 is 100 yards plus every damn game. Breaks all the major news everywhere. Jackson Smith making headlines. Record season. Everyone bets him finally. Doesn't do nothing. It's just so typical. This sport is so rigged. Sorry about that. That's a bad beat. It's brutal. As far as the big winner from yesterday, Posted by Dylan in the Discord. Another new person I don't think I've seen share named Dil Diloin or Dylan. Uh, this is a nice slip. 40 bucks to 500. He had the Jets plus three, the over 38, Darnell Mooney under his receptions. That was a prop I think I shared. And uh, yeah, he had a plus 750, 40 bucks to 490. Congratulations. Nice win. That's a damn good slip. All right. A couple props I'm eyeballing for the NBA today. I think you guys should consider using Outlier tool to get this data the first one steven adams for them rockets points and rebounds over 12 and a half i think we have a very high scoring affair anyways guys on the season he's only missed this once head to head 100 hit rate when he saw him he put up 25 most books are starting to push the odds down Fanduel's down to 128 now i would jump on this and jump on it early if you're gonna bet it. i think it's a really good spot for him next LeBron James under six and a half boards. He just not in there getting boards no more. He's just not like for whatever reason, he's not grabbing boards. He, he I think he's just trying to maintain his body and not get hurt and just kind of stay out of there. Plus, I mean, they got they got rebound. I guess they don't really need him to grab him like he used to. He's kind of playing the fast break, staying back. Um, seven boards is a lot for him right now. He's getting close five and six, but. I don't think he touches seven tonight. The odds are getting pushed down a lot. Caesars is at minus 139, but a lot of the books are getting in that 150 range. So again, if you're going to jump on it, jump on it early. Now, <clears throat> where's the big dogs putting their money at? Let's take a look. Uh, again, this was outlier. This tool is smart stake to identify where the sharps are looking. So these are the guys who are banned on the rec books. They bet on exchanges. This is where their money's going. The biggest one today, Josh Giddy under eight and a half assists. $4,000. Somebody fucking dropped a nuclear bomb on this. Uh, I would highly suggest you look at Josh Giddy's under assist. This is a massive bet. This is way more than you typically see for a prop, especially this early in the day. Somebody sees something. They don't think Josh is coming near that nine assist. Like this is a crazy amount of money. Next, Evan Mobley, four assists, 1.4K. Kaishan George, over 20 and a half points and assists, 929. I do like that a lot today. Wendell Carter, over 11 and a half points. And Cooper Flagg to get a block at plus 161. Versus the Nuggets, you get 860 liquidity on there at plus 160. That's a good bet. I really like it. I would suggest looking there. I might even, I might dabble with that one on a little parlay. We'll see. But that's where the big dogs are putting their money at today, guys. All right. Anyways, that's the fun stuff. Enough of the small talk and the chit chat. It's time to get serious, bitch. It's time to get a bag, dissect these games, and absolutely crack these folks. First game, Hawks versus the Pistons. So you got the Hawks on the road in Detroit. Pistons laying nine and a half. Pistons have been on a bit of a downward spiral, not playing that great. However, the Hawks have given us some brutal beats, some really losses to some really bad teams. Still good, but they've shown major chinks in their armor, one might say. So what to do? 
looking at the discrepancies, I think there's one big problem, and it's the Pistons' um, three-point offense is terrible. Uh, they can't shoot from the perimeter, and the Hawks are really good at the stopping the mid-range and the long ball on defense. Um, look, I do think the Pistons have a defense advantage over the Hawks' offense. I do. But I don't know that it should be 10 points. I think 10 points is a lot, especially for a team that I think is trending the wrong direction. Not to say the Pistons aren't an amazing top-tier team and won't bounce back, but I think in their current form, 10 points is too much. I'm going to be on the Hawks plus 9.5. Looking at the chart, plus 104 this morning, starting today after midnight, went up a bit, and now it's kind of stayed stagnant at minus 102. No, ma- nothing major here. We're not getting much from this. It's kind of stale at minus 102. Go with your gut. Cap it to the best of your ability. I like the Hawks plus nine and a half. That's where my money's going. Next game, Cavs versus the Pacers. Uh, this is another one, guys. Kind of torn on. Um, a lot of the big dogs and the sharp money is, is liking the Pacers on some of the spreads, uh, some of the plus point spreads. Um, the, the Pacers, uh, what am I trying to say here? The sharp money is on the Pacers plus the points, which surprised me. Um, That said, I can't get there. I still think this Cavs is a damn good basketball team. Uh, They're still top in scoring. They're still a a pretty above-average defense. Pacers are still an awful organization and team right now. They're not good. Uh, Seven points is not too much to ask from the Cavs, I don't think. Um, And I don't don't see how the Pacers can stay in this game. That said, they have been, they've been competing consistently. Not winning, but covering spreads and competing. So it's not my favorite play, but I like the Cavs minus the six and a half points. Another thing that helped me get there is the chart. This is what you'd love to see. Plus 117 yesterday after midnight, massive drop down to, uh, to minus 102. And now it's gone down consistently. And now we're at about minus 104. It's a good downward trend for the price. That means that money is not coming on the Pacers. Money's coming on the Cavs and pushing the price down. Good sign if you're back in the Cavs, which I am. Give me the Cavs minus six and a half, but be cautious. Sharp money is on the side of the Pacers on the plus the points. Next, Bucks versus the Wizards. Uh, Wizards, they are they are ass. They are ass. They are ass. We can't we can't back the Wizards. Um, have they upset us a few times? Yes. Have they covered a couple spreads? Yes. By far and large, though, I just don't think they can keep up with these Bucks, especially if the Bucks get hot from the perimeter. They get hot on that three. I don't see a world where the Wizards can keep this close. Bucks are not my favorite team. There's some jank artists, and it feels terrible backing them. Kind of feels like when you put money on the Knicks on spreads, you like you just never know, right? But man, we get look. We gotta go. Our eyes don't lie to us, guys. These Wizards, they are ass. Give me the Bucks minus eight and a half. Only thing I can bet here. I will say, it was nine and a half. The price got better and they dropped it to eight and a half. So that I, I'm going to say that's a pretty bad sign. Bucks are taking most of the money. Hold on. This might be a trap spot. Hold on a second, guys. I ain't even about to fall into a trap. Let's check how much money the Bucks were taking real quick. This might be a damn trap. Let me take a look before I call this an official trap spot. Bucks, 81% of the money charts moving upwards. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a fucking trap, bitch. Minus 117 to minus 113 to minus 110 to plus 100 to plus 101, 102. Then it moved to only eight and a half. They're taking 85% of the money. Guys, I want to paint this picture for you. Okay, listen to me. The Bucks took 85% of the money. The price got better. They continue to take 85% of the money. The price got better. Then instead of laying nine and a half, you only have to lay an eight and a half now. They are begging you to bet the bucks. I'm not falling into the trap. Give me the Wizards plus eight and a half. This is a chart. I I just won't fade this. Price keeps getting better. Now we're at plus money, 80%. Guys, 80% of the money, the chart should be going down and it should be going to 10 and a half. The chart went up and went to eight and a half. This is a classic Vegas trap spot setting you up to take. This is a classic bent over. Look, we do the fucking. We do the fucking around here. If you fade this, if you bet the bucks, you might as well bend over and say, penetrate me. We don't do that. Uh, give me the um, give me the the wizards plus eight and a half. I'm not falling for this trap. You can probably get a nine and a half. Take it. Take nine and a half, ten and a half, whatever. You can probably get nine or even ten for good money. Next game, Clippers versus the Heat. Uh, Tyron Lue's gambling. Kawhi's gambling. Uh, James Harden is blatantly gambling. 
to back this team i'm i hate these clippers i hate them that whole organization is purchased by the mob they are completely crime riddled and corrupt we already know that chauncey was on the clippers he got indicted with the rigged card games with the mob who do you think why do you think these clippers are up 20 points in the third every fucking night and lose why you think it because they're ass no because they're gambling they're corrupt can't back the wizards give me the heat minus six and a half at home Wizard uh Clippers plus six and a half, I will say. Minus 113 dropped to minus 119. It's actually a pretty good sign if you're back in the Clippers. And I understand why you'd want to, but I'm not falling for it. They're on back. They are gambling. They're gambling. Can't do it. Also, uh Heat's offense has massive advantages over the Clip uh uh over the uh Clippers defense, especially in that three-point category. Uh, I think this could get could I think the game could get pretty high scoring, but um just give me the heat minus six and a half. That's where I'm at. Next game, Hornets versus the Nets. Got two plays in this one. I'm going to be on the over 225 and a half, and I'm on the Nets plus four and a half. I like the Nets at home to cover the points versus a bum-ass team like the Hornets, and then I definitely like the over. I think it's too low. I think both these teams just score or play fast tonight. I think this game gets really high scoring, and out. Of, and I think that the Nets cover. If you look at the Hornets, minus 4.5, plus 102 down to minus 102. Not a lot of movement. It really hasn't moved much at all, especially for how much money they're taking. Um, <clears throat> the only major discrepancies here, uh, Nets three-point defense versus Hornets three-point offense, 29th versus 17th, and then rebounding. The Nets can't get boards, and the Hornets can. So, yeah, I do think the Hornets win the game. Maybe, but I don't think they covered the spread. And honestly, I've been kind of impressed with how the Nets are playing, and I've been unimpressed with the Hornets since the first three, four games of the season. Just my opinion. I think the Nets are a better team than the Hornets. I really do. Give me the Nets plus the points. Next game, Bulls, Magic. What to do? The Bulls are on a do not bet list. They're banned. And I think everybody's, I, I, look, I was a little sooner. Now everybody's like, man, fuck the Bulls. I'm done with them, bitch. I know, they're ass. Uh, I knew they couldn't sustain what they was doing. I knew it was too good to be true. How you go from like nine and three to nine and 10? Y'all are some jackasses. Um, Magic's been playing pretty good ball. What to do? Uh, I don't like either of these teams. Don't like backing either of these teams. So you know what I chose to do? Give me the over 238 and a half. Um, I think we see a lot of points. I think that the Magic can score on the Bulls with relative ease, and I think the Bulls can score on anybody. I think we see a fast-paced, a lot of fouls, and a high-scoring game. I like the over 238 and a half. Can't see it any other way. That's where I'm going to be, especially if the Bulls get hot from that three-point line. I think, they'll, I think they'll put up a lot of points, even on a tough defense like the Magic. And then I think the Magic will just score on the Bulls at will. I've been impressed with their offense anyways. Over 238 and a half, only thing I can bet. Would have bet the Bulls, but they're perma-banned. Chart. Magic minus eight and a half plus 108 big drop and then this morning another big drop it's down to 108 that is a damn good sign if you're back in the magic next game Rockets first the Jazz uh, I fought with this one a lot a lot because the Jazz have been really good to us they're kind of janky kind of inconsistent a bit hard to bet seems like they either upset or get blew out it doesn't seem like there's much of an in-between. Like, they either win the fucking game outright or within, like, two points, or they just lose by 20. I can't find a middle ground with them. It's frustrating when you have a spread above 10 points with a team who there's no middle ground, right? Um, that said, I mean, the Jazz are still not a great team. The Rockets' three-point shooting is ridiculous, and the Jazz can't stop it. I, I, don't, I don't think that... I don't think that... The I don't think the Jazz can stop the Rockets from scoring ever. I think the Rockets can stop the Jazz from scoring frequently. I think I think it's like a slow progress, and then you look up like it seems like a good game, and you look up in the fourth, and you're like, "Damn, they're down 20." Uh, that's I think like maybe five point lead a quarter type shit until it's just out of control. Give me the Rockets minus the 11 and a half. It was 12 and a half. They took most of the money. It moved to 11 and a half. That's a little bit scary. Plus 104 down to plus 102. Not much movement. It's kind of stale. The only thing that is kind of weird to me is it going from, uh, or no, this is good. It went from 11 to 12. You can still get 11 and a half. It's good that the the uh the spread got worse because they're taking most of the money. Um, yeah, try to get 11 and a half somewhere and just in, embed it. That's where I'm at. Next game, Mavs versus the Nuggets. Oh, these Nuggets, man. They've killed me. They've killed me. They've killed me. I can't bet this team. I, I don't think I've won a single time I've backed the Nuggets. Um, the Mavs starting to play better ball. 
but they're still ass. They are ass. They are. They are ass. Uh, 27th in scoring versus the sixth uh, defense in the Nuggets. Nuggets are first in scoring versus the Mavs with the 17th defense. They have every single defensive advantage in the world over the Mavs. I mean, this is just massive discrepancies everywhere, right? Um, and then on the offense, I mean, they're, they're first in scoring versus 17th defense. They, they have a ton of offense, and the points in the paints is a ridiculous statistic as well. I just think the Nuggets get to shoot threes, shoot from the perimeter, and even if they miss, I think they get the board, put them back up, draw fouls. I just think this game gets out of control for the Mavs. But the Mavs have been playing better, and I've been impressed with them lately. This is not my favorite play. I can never get them right. You should probably fade me. I'm going to be on the Nuggets minus 11 and a half. What also helped me get there is the chart. Plus 113, boom, took some big money around 3 a.m., dropped all the way down to minus 104, shot back up to plus 102, and now it's at minus 102. Good sign. Downward movement, taking most of the money. That's a good sign if you're backing them Nuggets, which we are. Next game, Suns versus the Lakers. I believe this is the final game of the night. I struggled with this one. Tough one to cap. What do you do? Lakers have been so good to me all season, but these Suns have been pretty good to me too, and you're getting six points. Six points feels like a lot here. I don't know why, and I think I'm overthinking it. I'm not going to do it. Lakers at home, been the spread covering machine. They've been dominating everybody. They're winning all their games. I think they're a much better team than the Suns. I do think they're a six-point better team than the Suns, especially at home. Not much to say here. Got to go with my Lakers. Give me the Lakers minus five and a half. Happy to lay it. Um, I don't, I think they're a better team than the Suns slightly, but especially at home, I think they got it. I just do. Um, and then if you look at the chart, Suns were taking most of the money plus four and a half plus one thirteen until about eight 30 AM massive money came in and took it down to plus a hundred something to note bad sign. If you're back in the Lakers, which I am. Okay, guys, that'll be all for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Let's get out of here. Let's get a bag. And let's crack these folks.